Let's create some animated grain using a single layer, no plugins and no scripts inside of After Effects. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we're inside of After Effects and we're taking a look at the really popular animated grain or animated noise effect that you can get inside of After Effects these days. I see this everywhere um, and it's kind of this sort of glitching animated um, evolving grain that you can see uh, all over this character here. Um, essentially there are several ways to do this. Some people use like pre-comped um, uh, Photoshop brushes that change every few frames. Uh, other times you can do like an adjustment layer with fractal noise and stuff on it. One technique I found which I quite like the style of is to use a extreme version of rough and edges to fix that. So this is what we're going to do uh, and you can do it all with a single layer. And if you want it to be masked to a shape, then obviously you can just use normal things like um, mats and um, masking to do that. So you can see I've got the exact same animation you've just seen here, apart from with no grain applied. And I've got to admit, I do quite like it like this, as if, you know, this whole thing was his head. Um, but if I quickly turn off the background, you can see, for example, we've got this guy animating. Now, this is just a series of PNGs, nothing special going on there. So I'm not going to explain how I did that. What we're going to focus on today is the animated noise. So I'm going to grab and turn on my background layer. We're going to do this one first because it doesn't require a mask. Uh, and it'll just show you guys how I do this. The way I do it is I create a new solid. Uh, it doesn't matter what that uh, solid is because the whole point of this is that we can make it uh, adjustable really easily. So what we're going to do is just make a black solid and I'm just going to call this one um, background noise. OK, and we're going to make sure that it's the size of our canvas, which it will be by default. Then we're going to head over to our effects and presets panel and we're going to add a roughen edges onto that. Just click and drag that onto that layer. And you can see already start some of our background starts to peek through around the edges here. Now we're going to do all of our settings inside of this rough and edges effect, but we're also going to add a fill. And using this fill, we can then select the color that we want. So if I quickly hide this for now, I'll be able to color drop this dark orange that we use on the character's lines. Uh, and then we'll just pop this guy just above the background layer like that. So. Adjusting these rough and edges settings is how we're going to affect this. Now, the biggest setting is uh, this one at the top where it says roughen at the moment. We're going to change that to cut and that just makes the edges a little bit harsher. Uh, so when we crank the border all the way up to max, which I believe is 500, you can already see it's going to start to really roughen what we need. But at the moment, the size of this is, is way too big. OK. Um, so even if as we scrub at the moment, it doesn't animate and this kind of blotchy effect is good, but it's not what we're after. So what we can actually do is decrease the scale of this. Now, all of these settings will be dependent on the size of your canvas. So this border at 500 and this scale, which I think I'm going to set to about 20, that's dependent on the size of my canvas. If your canvas is a different size, you'll have to see and modify these to get the effect that you want. Um, that is basically the only eight things that I do edit. If you want to, you can up the complexity, which I do as well. It just adds in a little bit more detail there. So if you watch this area as I drag that complexity back down, you can see that you lose some of the um, deeper, darker bits. So crank that all the way to the top, you get a little bit more complexity. Maybe we can scale this down to say 15 and you can see that makes the noise smaller. Um, changing the fill is obviously how you're going to change the color of this later on, like so, but we're going to leave it at this kind of orange at the moment. So how do we animate this then? That's really simple. You see, we have this evolution here, which basically just regenerates a starting point. And if I spin this really fast, you can see that our grain starts to animate. OK, so all we're going to do if we just reset that back to zero, zero is we're going to alt click on this little stopwatch next to evolution. And that's going to open up that layer's evolution with a bit of text where it says effect rough and edges. Now, I know I said there's no scripting. Technically, this is a script, but you're literally going to type time asterisk, which is times and then number. Now, the larger the number, the quicker your animation is going to be, the quicker this this evolution thing is going to spin around. I have found I quite like 1500 and it's basically um, time works as in time times X and X is one second. So it's going to revolve 1500 times a second. OK, so we can see when we start to play that, it's going to animate our grain to a speed that we like. And if we see that once it's pre-rendered, we can see the speed. Obviously, that's going to depend on the effect that you want. If you like a more stuttery effect, you can also add a thing called posterized time. And posterized time 
changes your frame rate of whatever this particular element is. So I've dropped that frame rate down to 24 when it's in a 60 FPS, I believe, um, uh, composition. So if I drop that all the way down to 12, you can see that it's going to make my grain a lot jumpier than if I delete that. Okay. So we've got our background noise. It's filling up quite a large amount because at the moment it is still that solid size. So, oops, excuse me. Uh, if I drag that up, you can see that our edges completely disappear. I drag it down, you can see we've still got a hard edged shape. So, how do we fit this to the shape that we want? Very simply, we just apply a mask. I'm going to grab my uh, ellipse tool and making sure I have a layer selected, that's going to draw a mask. And roughly in the middle, I'm just going to hit Control Shift and drag to bring up a circle, roughly the size that I want. Now at the moment that's creating a completely solid line, outline, which you might want. I think it looks quite good, um, but it might not be what you want. So to make that edge soft, we literally feather that. And for this composition, I found about 300, oops, I'm touching 700 there, about 300 pixels works well. And you can see that's just going to feather the edge of what we've created and soften that up so that it brings in some of that stuff that's being cut off. Now, that's it. If you're happy, you can quit here and go and do the rest of your um, animation. But I'm going to show you how to mask this to certain shapes and other stuff like that. So uh, this background noise, I'm actually going to change to a brighter color. If I select this same yellow, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to sort of increase that like that. Just because we're going to add some dark shadow to his face now and we don't want that to be um, like lost, all that detail. So. To make things simple for myself, I'm going to duplicate my background noise layer so I know that all the settings are the same. And I'm going to drag it above the face. I'm then going to eye drop this dark orange color so I get the color that I want. But I am going to twirl down and I'm just going to delete this mask. Okay, that brings back our layer. So I'm going to hide this layer for now so that when I draw my mask, uh, I'm going to draw it using an ellipse tool again. I can kind of create the line where I want this shadow to be. So I'm actually going to change that master subtract and you'll be able to see uh, in this section. Boom, that we've got this area that we want. Now that's cut out this section of his face. We can soften that up again by changing the feather, which is quite nice, but it's still appearing everywhere else in the layer. That's really simple to fix. You just duplicate your face layer, drag it above your noise layer, and then on your noise, you just rename, uh, you just go to your track mat options and choose alpha mat face two, and that will cut the edge of your face off. Now I'm gonna change this layer from background noise to face noise. And you can see that it's start, gonna get a little bit busy down in your layers palette if you're um, gonna have lots of layers. So firstly, I'm not quite happy with this mask, so I'm just gonna come in and adjust that a little bit, just so it's not a hard solid color on the edge of its face there. And that's a good thing about this technique, it's completely editable. However, it's going to get quite messy. As you can see in our other animated one here, we've got loads of layers going on. So what you can do is you can switch toggle modes until you see these shy options, and you can turn both of these layers to shy. Then when you click your shy toggle up here, that will hide those. Because you know you're not going to need them again, you can just get rid of them from your composition. I could even do that with the background noise one here. Shy, and that will remove it. All the effects are still there, it just doesn't appear in your layers panel. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You can see, uh, I'll just take you through what I did on this one because it's the same technique. You can see that uh, on the eyes layer, for example, we have eyes grain, but this time I just did two masks instead. So it fills in everywhere. I made it slightly pink and I just masked out each individual eye with one layer. So that's two versions of the grain, but on a single layer. Uh, I also applied a, a rough and edges to the shine here, like so, which evolves in the same way. And what that does is it creates like a nice bobbly effect on those shines there. And then I went back and I added a little highlight on the face layer here as well. And that is literally all there is to it. So I really like this technique. Um, I think it's a lot quicker and easier than doing it with sort of Photoshop brushes and that sort of thing. But obviously you do get a slightly different effect and it's less controlled because with doing brushes in pre-comps then you can obviously make any brush that you want and it can be any style that you want. Uh, I still quite like this though. I think it works really well. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you all next time on another episode of Tip Top. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.